Geology in a jiffy. What's in the bag? It's... Waterfalls. What is a waterfall? When one thinks of a waterfall, we often think of sheets of water cascading over a cliff edge, the spray rising up around it, maybe forming a rainbow as the sunlight shines through it, such as at these locations from England, Iceland and Canada. If we looked in a dictionary, the term waterfall could be given as an area where water flows over a vertical drop along the course of a stream or river. We know that rivers have three main sections, namely upper, middle and lower. Waterfalls are commonly formed in the upper course of a river, where a stream or river cuts down through the rocks. Such waterfalls often only flow after a period of rain or as ice melts. Waterfalls found further downstream are often perennial, flowing all year long due to the greater volume of water flowing in the section of the river. Waterfalls can have a wide range of widths and depths, this depending upon their location, the underlying geology and the climate they exist in. How do waterfalls form? Waterfalls take a long time to form. There are different types of waterfall, so let's look at how the basic waterfall forms, a block waterfall, as it descends from a wide stream. Underneath the ground in our model, the geology consists of three parallel bedded layers of rock. The lowest layer is quite hard, and so resistant to weathering and erosion. Overlying this, the middle layer is softer, so it's not that resistant to weathering and erosion. Overlying this, the uppermost layer is quite hard, and so also resistant to weathering and erosion. Over time, the processes of weathering and erosion change the landscape, forming a cliff face, which we see here from the side. Some distance away, there are some hills, upon which it rains. This rainwater then has to move to the sea, so it flows down the hill slopes, in the form of streams and rivers. As the river flows towards our cliff face, it has to continue to move, but how does it move from the top of the cliff to the lower areas? It cannot simply flow forwards, nor can it suddenly turn a 90 degree bend. Instead, with the weight of the water that is pushing the water down the hill slope, the water is pushed, but at the same time also falling due to gravity. So it sprays outwards, forwards and away from the cliff face. As the water meets the rock ledge below, it splashes upwards and sideways. Let's look at what happens where the water hits the rock ledge. The water that hits the surface could be made up of just one drop, or even a few, or, if under the cascading torrent that makes the ever-falling curtain of water, there would be billions of droplets, all hitting the surface of the rock. If we could look into one of those droplets, inside it we would probably find a tiny grain of sand or rock. That single, individual grain inside the falling water droplet will itself act like a hammer with the ability to break rock. Wow! Imagine a falling grain of sand or a pebble. As it hits the surface of the rock, it could crack the rock it hits and also cause fragments to break away and fly off, this being the process of attrition. The grain or pebble themselves act like a hammer, smashing the rock. But it is not just the grain or pebble, as the smaller fragments themselves also act like hammers, so making more fragments to further break up the rock. Grains or pebbles can also scrape across surfaces, the point they hit experiencing friction, so wearing away the rock, this being the process of abrasion. The water droplets themselves, all falling so fast, can sometimes trap air inside and between them, which, when forced against the rock when the droplet hits the surface, can also break up the rock by the process of hydraulic action. All these droplets hitting the rock also act as tiny hammers, further breaking up the rock. Over time, the combination of attrition, abrasion and hydraulic action cause a hole to form in the rock. The falling water soon fills this hole, forming a plunge pool. As time progresses and more water hits the rock, the plunge pool will grow larger. So we now have a plunge pool formed at the base of our cliff, where the falling water hits the rock ledge below. Let's now look at where the sideways splashes hit the cliff face. Here we can see the sideways splashes hitting the layer of softer rock. As how they made the plunge pool, the droplets may also carry grains of rocks or sands. So, in combination, they act as hammers, 
eroding the softer rock, causing boulders to form at the base of the cliff. As time moves on, the softer layer becomes more eroded, forming a cave under the overlying harder rock. But, as the cave deepens, the weight of the overhanging harder rock is too much for the weight of itself and the river flowing over it. So it cracks, then falls down, so changing the position of where the river flows off the edge of the cliff face. At the same time, the river continues to cascade down from the top of the cliff, the processes of abrasion, attrition and hydraulic pressure all extending the plunge pool and also further eroding the softer layer of rock until, again, the weight of the overhanging harder rock and the river flowing over it becomes so great that the overlying layer of rock cracks, then falls down, so again changing the position of where the river flows off the edge of the cliff. Over time, the whole process repeats again and again, the plunge pool becoming longer, the softer layer being continually eroded and the overlying layer dismantled, piece by piece, so moving the waterfall further back from where it once stood. That's amazing! If we look at this example of an occasional waterfall in Iceland, where a river only flows over the cliff when the ice melts, we can clearly see the alternating hard and soft layers, in this case, alternating lava flows and sedimentary deposits. The harder, more resistant lava flows protrude from the cliff face, and the softer layers are more eroded into the cliff. This majestic waterfall is also in Iceland. We can see the amazing curtain of falling water, and, if you look carefully, you can get an idea of the scale and power of the water by comparing its size with the people walking behind the water curtain. Wow! We can clearly see a softer layer of rock that has eroded more quickly than the two thicker, harder layers of rock that sandwich the softer layer. The plunge pool is very evident, as are the boulders made up of the harder, overlying rock, these having toppled into the pool as the overlying layer collapses above the eroded, softer layer of rock. This photo, taken looking into the curtain of water that is the Niagara Falls waterfall in Canada, also shows how the water splashes upwards and sideways, so having eroded the softer layer, leaving the overlying harder layer protruding outwards, this to be one day snapped and broken by the mighty power of billions of water droplets. To see how waterfalls can extend themselves to create gorges, please do watch our Geology in a Jiffy film about gorges. Please subscribe to my channel. Bye!